Hello everyone and welcome to Abundantly Minimal. My name is Sarah and I'm excited to continue our Minimalist Living 101 series with the topic of delayed gratification. In this video, I'll be sharing a lot of different approaches of how you can connect minimalism with delayed gratification and how it can especially be helpful if you're dealing with impulse shopping or purchasing more than you need. Let's jump right in. Now, the first thing that's helpful when we think about delayed gratification is to actually think about the opposite, instant gratification. And in many aspects of life, we live in a society that kind of favors and leans towards instant gratification. When we think of some examples of this, it includes concepts such as buy now, pay later, impulse purchases such as the end of an aisle before your checkout at a store, fast food, two day or even one day delivery. These are all some common examples of how we as a society seem to want things instantly or immediate access. And this, of course, inherently by itself is not an evil thing. There are certainly situations where these can be very helpful to us and can give opportunities that wouldn't otherwise exist. But if we get too comfortable or too caught up in this instant cycle, it makes it more difficult for us to actually think through purchases that we're making or to make the most intentional and meaningful choice for us. And that's where I think more of a slow living approach or delaying gratification can be helpful. It's not about depriving yourself, but when you take a little extra time before making a decision, you'll often save money, make a better choice that will have more positive consequences long-term rather than negative ones. And it also is a way to really question and examine if something is actually needed. And I think this intentional approach can have a whole host of benefits. I want to share eight specific examples of ways that my husband and I have practiced delayed gratification and it's helped us in a variety of ways. But first, two actionable mindset shifts or exercises for you to do here um, as you think about if delayed gratification could be helpful in your life. The first tip has to do when you are shopping. No matter what type of shopping, if you are trying to buy something, whether in person, online, etc., a few questions to ask yourself before purchasing. The first question, do you need this item right now? When we unpack that further, number one, we have the question need. Is this a need or is this more of a want? And then the second part of that is right now. There are definitely certain items that we do need or even that we want, but does it have to be right now in this particular transaction? Let's say there's a new book that comes out and you're very excited about it. Of course, you could purchase the book right away, but are you going to start reading it right away? If so, awesome. It seems like a good, a good choice. But if you realistically already have a backlog of books and you might not even get to it, I don't know, in months or even longer, maybe you don't need to go for it right now. Maybe you can wait a little bit longer. If you still have some groceries or food in the fridge, but you're thinking about going grocery shopping for a few select items, could you put that off a few days? In doing so, you're more likely to eat up some of those items from your fridge that you already have and prevent them from going to waste. And it allows you to you know, save that money a few extra days, which of course in the short term maybe doesn't make a big difference, but over time you doing this can actually yield bigger savings also from not having as much wasted food. So those are just a couple examples. Do I need this right now? Asking yourself that is going to give you a little bit of clarity whether it is a need and whether it is an immediate need. The other suggestion here is the mindset shift that possessions don't make us happy. Of course, I'm hopefully not the first person who's sharing that sentiment, but we have to remember that it can be tempting and we can feel a bit of euphoria almost if we are shopping or thinking about bringing a new item into our lives. But an item cannot genuinely contribute to true happiness. Of course, it can increase comfort. It can increase fun. There are positives that come from different items, but it is not possible to truly purchase your way to true happiness. Let's try to bring it back to the root issue when you're thinking about making a purchase. Why are you thinking that this product is going to make you happy? What is the emotional need or thought process behind that thought? 
that leads you to make certain purchases. Having some deep reflection here is going to have major impacts in how we purchase. And when you do that self-reflection and ask those tough questions about why you want to buy a certain thing, whether it's insecurity, thinking that you're not good enough, maybe it's because you're lonely or you're bored with your life and you want to change, these root issues have major impact on how we live our lives and what kind of purchases we're tempted to make. So I encourage you before you're purchasing things to really think through that a little bit more carefully. And I think you'll find it can help prevent purchases that you'll regret later or have to declutter later. Now to get into the eight ways that my husband Jake and I have practiced delayed gratification in our own lives. We have practiced delayed gratification about the places that we've lived. We haven't lived somewhere too nice too soon. There's definitely been gradual upgrades that have taken place. We do know that several others, um, either friends or family members in our age group, have decided to purchase or rent fancier or more deluxe apartments or buy bigger houses or more expensive homes than we did. But our whole approach has been gradual increments. We don't need a luxury you know, five-star apartment. We don't need to have this mansion or a beautiful massive house or any of those things. We just need something simple for us. And we do look forward to whenever in the future that we do purchase, you know, a house house rather than our condo right now, but we have what we need and that's fine. And because of that, we have been able to not only save a lot of money, but also focus on other ways of building wealth, such as investing or saving for retirement, or even me just being able to leave a traditional job and embark on my own adventure. Those are things that we were able to do because of delayed gratification, not going for you know the best possible option right away and allowing ourselves to be happy with that. While we're talking about home things, there's a room of our house that I'm pretty sure you've hardly ever seen. And that has been intentional because it's one of the ugliest rooms I've ever seen. And that is our hall bathroom. With this, um, I believe this is original bathroom from about the 1970s when this condo was built. And we don't like any of it. Now, our, we, when we had a roommate living with us, uh, she did use that bathroom, so we weren't actually in there at all. And um, after she moved out, then, um, you know, we do use it somewhat, but there's definitely parts that are broken and completely out of date and just quite frankly, not my aesthetic. And it's definitely something we know we are going to be redoing. And actually, we're pretty close to that process. We've been gradually saving up for that over time. We could have, right when we moved in, decided, you know what, let's just jump in and renovate it right away. And sure, it would have been really beautiful and we would have probably gotten some use out of it. But what I'm happy we did instead with that money is put a lot extra down on our mortgage right away. And because of that, we dramatically reduced the total amount of interest owed on our property, which is great. And right now we're shooting to pay off this property in three years total. Um, we would then have about a year and a couple months extra until that point. But us choosing to make that option was a more economic option for us, as well as, again, we'll be so appreciative when it's time to finally get into that space. We also put off the process of trying to have kids for the first five and a half years of our marriage. And that was intentional. I wanted to make sure we were in a really great situation, both personally, having time as a couple to grow and evolve, and also in a financial situation as well, just because it's a big life change. And for us, choosing to do that has helped us grow and improve ourselves in many ways that we, when that time comes, are going to be so excited and be able to contribute you know, our full attention to that process. So again, delayed gratification. I'm so excited for that phase of life, but it was also okay with me that we waited for as long as we did. Even going back to after we got married, our honeymoon, we chose to do a belated honeymoon. So one year after we were married is when we took our honeymoon. And the reason for that is because we didn't have a lot of money at that time. 
And definitely it was busy enough that I hadn't had a chance to actually book different trip adventures. And so by waiting a year, both of us had been able to work for a year and we saved up for it and we were able to take an amazing trip. Um, it was seven weeks of traveling through Europe and it was so much fun. And there's no way we could have done a trip like that had we done it right away just because of finances as well as the time. So that was a huge bonus for us. And again, that was maybe going against some cultural norms, but for us, it was a huge improvement because we waited that extra year. Now we've talked a lot about bigger things, but the same is true for smaller, more individual purchases as well. One thing that I would like to do that I've wanted to do for a long time, but I just haven't gotten around to it is go thrift shopping. Obviously with the pandemic and then being sick myself and all of that, it just hasn't made sense or I haven't been able to go. The idea was I knew that what I wanted to look for wasn't completely urgent. It wasn't a need and it wasn't something I needed right away. So I did put that off. And by doing that, it did prevent me from making some of those impulse purchases just because I do have a good time thrift shopping. And while I'm still very intentional, there are of course times where I do maybe make a mistake and, and think something will be more valuable than it ends up being. We're all human, that's I think a common thing sometimes. But the fact that I have put it off allows me to make a more intentional choice whenever I do go there as I've narrowed my thinking about specifically what I'm looking for. The grocery example is definitely something that we have done thinking about ways that we can make what we have work in the fridge before actually having to purchase more ingredients. So whether this is trying to do a stir fry to use up any miscellaneous veggies that we have, whether it's kind of going through items in the freezer or having a leftovers night, these are ways that we can delay our grocery shopping or even prevent a trip altogether. And of course, while it's more fun to purchase some of those new foods that you've been craving from the store, it allows us to overall reduce food waste and not have to go to the store as much. We've also practiced delayed gratification with online items. So if there is a purchase online we're thinking about making, we will often give 24 hours to think more about the decision. Online shopping platforms are designed to encourage you to spend more, whether it's different flash deals or very short-term sales that are happening or free shipping if you spend this amount of money or even pop-ups that encourage you to add different items to your cart. It can be very easy to impulsively add things or continue shopping and even check out without having to give it much thought. So for online purchases that are not immediately urgent, I would encourage you to kind of reflect about them over time. And again, that can help with preventing impulse purchases from happening that you might regret or even have to declutter in the future. Finally, we've also practiced delayed gratification with furniture. When we look around our space, most furniture we actually did not pick out new ourselves. Most of it is either secondhand or if there was a family member who no longer needed that item and we've made it work. Does it mean that our home has a beautiful aesthetic that we both are obsessed with? No, there's definitely improvements that we both know we'd like to be made in the future, but these pieces of furniture work and we've got it, it already exists. And while at some point in life, I'm sure we will make upgrades on those items, we are going to keep using the value out of them at this point and that's a choice that we're okay with. I hope this video gave you some suggestions about how we can think about delayed gratification or more of an approach to slow living and enjoying and using what we have. Let me know in the comments below any ways that you might practice this or if there were suggestions that I shared in this video you think are most helpful. If you'd like to check out the first video I did in this Minimalist Living 101 series about batching, check that out over here. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, you don't wanna miss out do that right over here. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.